This is not a good scene at all. This billionaire is inside this sex suit. There's dildos everywhere. There's chains, ropes, all kinds of shit. And is he's dead. He's bloody. T. Hello, John and Nicole. This is my first time watching you guys live. Well, thank you for joining Sun's T. Sun's T. I love the name. Hey, Sable. It's been a while since we've seen you too. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Hey, Liz. Hey, Wolfie. Hey, oh Amanda. Oh gosh. my gosh. I should put a story together real quick. <laughs> Actually, um, Amanda, I do have, if this is the, the right Amanda, I know that there are a couple Amandas um, that are Supremos, but for our next story, we have two, I think, short stories, and if you stick around, Amanda, yours will be the second one. Um, I've got Rachel's surprise shot up first, um, and so I did, I went out and got the ingredients right before this, so we do have a couple new Supremos to welcome. So thank you very much to Daniel and to Shane. Thank you both for joining us as a Patreon member uh, and Taco Supremo. So for those of you who join as uh, Taco Supremos and pay for the full year, you have that option on Patreon. Um, we will throw in a bottle of Jupiter CBD. Um, and so if you like it, you know, certainly you can subscribe again. It definitely benefits um, John in the podcast uh specifically. Uh, I actually take this every night before I go to bed, a full dropper. And it's uh, really good stuff. Organic CBD, FDA approved, uh, good, good stuff. And uh, I think like one bottle without the discount is like 80 bucks. So if you do the full year Supremo membership and um, uh, and pay for that for a year, like it's definitely worth it because it pretty much pays for the whole thing. So uh, we'll, we'll get those shipped out um, for those who sign up for the year. So I have a very, very oh god, exciting. I'm I am pumped for this because I did go to the liquor store. I picked up our ingredients for two special requests that we have for this episode and the next. I love it when we get specific requests. Um, so this one is going to be for Rachel. All righty, nice. All right, surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Cheers. Cheers to you, Rachel. <coughs> Whoa. I don't know what to think. It kind of tasted <clears throat> like strawberry yogurt, but also cough medicine, but in a good way. It didn't burn, but it just tasted shit. Clo you're close. You're on the right track. With cough <laughs> medicine? No, with the strawberry yogurt. Is it a chocolate covered strawberry shot? No. It tastes like those strawberry, those frozen strawberries that you have in the freezer. The chocolate ones. A little. The like low I mean, your, your fruit is close, but not cold. Correct. Raspberry? No. Blackberry? Blueberry. Yellowberry? Blueberry. Oh. It is actually whipped cream vodka with a healthy splash of uh, blueberry Red Bull. Oh. Blueberry Red Bull? Yeah. All right. Tonight we're going across the street from the Geneva Museum of Natural History. I showed you the apartment. And in this said apartment, this is it right here. One more time. The very top floor, the very top floor is what this man owns tonight. We're talking about this. This man right here. Can you describe him? An important businessman. He has a power stance and a big red tie. Okay, so if mm, I if, yeah, if I didn't tell you that he owned the, the buildings, would you would you also say that he was an important businessman? Yes, because he looks wealthy, right? What do you think he does? Stocks and bonds, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. banking. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, describe the difference between a stock and a bond? No, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I don't understand how that works, which is 93% of the reason why I'm not involved in that business. Shram says he looks like he does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he just like yells things in a phone and he delegates. acts like he does things. Do you think he's good looking? Um, I guess maybe for his age. Maybe if he was younger, but he's not really my type. He doesn't look very happy, so I'm not really like he's a... Really? He doesn't look happy. Oh, well that's confusing because I thought money bought happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, tonight we're talking about Edward... What? I was going to say Sarah says, hell no! <laughs> 
I don't know what. I, don't, I think on the attractiveness piece. So. Oh, shit, really? All right. All right. Tonight, we're talking about him, Edward, Eduardo, Edward, I can't say his Eduardo. name. Eduardo. No, it's not Eduardo. It's Edward. Edward in America, <laughs> in English. But Edward. it's uh, Edward. It's a, he's French. Edward. Edward. Yeah, there you go. It's E with a tilde over it. D O U A R R D. Edward Stern. Ed, Edward. So good old Eddie. Yeah, Ed. Edward. We're going to February 28th, 2005. Now, this man who we're going to get into his background and everything else, he is a French banker and he's extremely successful. He's the 38th richest man in the world, or excuse me, in Switzerland, which I don't know the population of Switzerland, but that's, you know, if I was to take a, he is a billionaire, especially in today's standards, but today it would be, he would be in the billionaire, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, that was 2005. So, oh. Maybe not quite. It is a Tuesday morning. It's the morning time. He's at work. He owns the building that he works in. He works in the top floor. The top floor is his office. The whole top floor? Of that building I showed you? The green one? Yeah. The whole top floor is this man's office. Nice. So he owns the building and he, and I'm going to get kind of into what he does, but he's basically a financier. He owns his own firm and they, they make investments across multiple different different vehicles. So he was in stocks and bonds. No. Uh, like no. a hedge fund manager? Well, maybe it's no, he's so stocks and bonds would be like uh, someone buying off Wall Street. This guy travels to to different places, even like in Russia. And he he gets these uh, these uh, corporations and he basically buys them out or whatever, takes control over them and then makes his money like that. He's, he builds this huge portfolio. I, I don't know. I'm just relaying words that I've heard. I'm curious, did the word activist investor come up as his uh, term? No, not activist, but the the word shape. Shady dealings did come up quite okay. a bit. Yeah. Okay. It's a Tuesday morning. He has some very important business meetings to attend to this day. There are presidents of different banks. He misses at least two of these meetings by the time lunchtime comes around. And Tuesday in this office, from what I was reading, his favorite place is a sushi place right across the street. And every Tuesday they order, literally they order the menu, everything. And this sushi restaurant makes thousands of rolls. I'm making you like super uh, That is, that would be like my fucking dream. Oh my God. Making sushi? Ha- ordering every sushi roll on a, like a fancy sushi place menu. Huh. This man, he misses two meetings and his secretary, as well as his his uh, co-partner and some other workers there in the building, they automatically know that something's wrong. Yeah, this guy is rich. He owns the building, he owns the company, but he is there every day. Plus his brand new Bentley was in the parking lot. He should be there just like every day. He's the first one there. First one in, last one out. He's there. Bentley is in the parking lot. Where is he at? They search everywhere, every nook and cranny of this building. They cannot find him anywhere. His apartment is literally across the street from from the building. We showed you the apartment that I'll show you one more time. Okay. So could he be at the apartment building and just his his car was in the office side? This is his apartment building and he lives up here on the, the very penthouse. Yeah, he well he owns the the whole freaking thing. True. So, they go to his apartment. Now this is some of his co-workers and secretary and also they have like the um, like his landlady that has the key and everything else they go they walk in you know they're calling his name Edward Edward you here nothing nothing's out of place nothing is ransacked they don't get any response they do see that there's that uh, like for instance his his wallet and his phone is on the side table so they know he's here somewhere but and the place is big his apartment's huge so it takes a while for them to finally go into the room where he is, the bedroom door, which was left ajar and the lights were shut off and everything else. They push it open and they see what they think is a mannequin, right? They, that's what it always is. They think they see what a mannequin on the floor, a bloody mannequin on the floor. They have no idea yet that is Edward and it would take, it would.
would actually take hours for them to know for sure that it is their friend Edward Stern, the financier, right? I just think that's interesting that that's their first thought. That I mean, a mannequin, okay, but there's blood around the mannequin. Like, I, that's just, I don't know. Well, I guess I wasn't there, but I don't think that would be my first thought. Yes, it would. Because, so a lot of the story I pulled from Vanity Fair, I hardly never get to do that, right? Vanity Fair, which was whose favorite magazine that they found in the boat that, in the houseboat that he broke into. Andrew Kinnanen. So anyway, can you read this? It's from the Vanity Fair. From the Vanity Fair, 48 hours after the body was found, a Swiss newspaper, the Tribune de Genève, dropped a bomb. Stern had in fact been murdered, shot four times. But the even more jaw-dropping disclosure was that he had been found encased in a flesh-colored latex bodysuit. Okay, well, that wow. one makes way more sense. Yeah. Than, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is so, the one I, I pulled up. I, I don't know if this is the exact model, but oh, that's what a bodysuit is. Is that what they had in Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's a bodysuit? It looks yes, more like a blow-up body doll. Suit. Yeah, I typed in bodysuit. Well, let, let well I guess flesh covered. I'm just glad this is your search history and not mine. <laughs> Oh, you can buy them on Amazon. Look at this. <laughs> oh, Those are definitely a... different. Yeah, that's not it. Um, let me see. But it does remind yeah, this me. Is it. it does remind oh, me it. of the the episode of Seinfeld where the mannequin they think that Elaine is styled. They they stole the uh, mannequin style to look like Elaine. So you would think this was a mannequin, right? Yeah, I would. I um, agree. Yeah, probably. But I would like go up to it and ask why is that bloody. You would go up to it and ask it why it's bloody. Not ask it. <laughs> what the fuck. <laughs> Not ask it, but in my head, I would say, why is this mannequin bloody? That's so bizarre. Well, it is bizarre unless you have all the facts. Inside his bedroom were also whips, chains. There was a a uh, like a sex swing rope that you swing on, I guess. Mm. And there was dildos. It was a whole thing. So at, initially, the secretary thought that this was some kind of solo sex act, like maybe choking himself or yeah. something. It gone sounds wrong. like he's gone wrong. He's bad, but it's not perfectly good at it. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Now, this is bad news because, OK, one of the richest people in the world who who has direct ties to the French government. This is not a good scene at all. Right. This billionaire is inside this sex suit. There's dildos everywhere. There's chains, ropes, all kinds of shit. And is he's dead. He's bloody. Now, they actually shot four times. Shot four times. He is shot four times. Now, this is this is where it gets interesting. He is shot twice in the head, once in the chest, and once in the stomach. So it seems like the, the headshots is kind of like an execution. Whoever wanted to kill Edward Stern, the billionaire financier, wanted damn sure to make sure he was dead. And not only dead, they wanted to make sure that his image was ruined. Because, I mean, his image is ruined. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. no, like no one thinks of his murder or death in any other way than he was inside of a sex latex flesh-covered suit. Like, that's With a it. room full of dildos and a sex swing, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know Can't what I'm saying? Can't live that one down. So, whoever did Doesn't matter how great of a person you were, like if you did great philanthropic work. Exactly. Don't matter. Yeah, I guess most people have a say of what they die in. What? Like... <laughs> I feel like that's actually not the case at all. <laughs> well, yeah, you choose your outfits every day, right? Unless like, unless he but was- But how do you know that that's the day that- You just have to make better choices. That's right. Always, can, wear, always wear good underwear. You can wear the same thing every day. Like Barack Obama wears the same shit every day. The same, same suit. suit. Mark Zuckerberg, the alien guy, he wears the same <laughs> shit every day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Automatically, this goes into some wild theories. Like, tell me what some of the theories are. Like, who wants this guy dead? Scorned lover. Someone um, who f he like business he yeah. fucked with business associate enemy right. turned friend friend turned enemy <laughs> Sorry. friends with benefits turned friend with murder. This was an elite financier of to not only the France government but several French politicians in Paris. His death was tantamount to that of a Rockefeller. Do, I mean, I don't know any Rock of John Rockefeller. Is that his name? I don't fucking know. Are they still around? Wasn't what's his face related to the Rockefellers? The guy mm -hmm. that died that what that murdered his wife and the other lady that they did the the documentary on. That at the end of the documentary, he admitted to killing all the people. But the documentary was about how he didn't kill the people. And I, his name is escaping me. But once I hear it, I'll be like, yes, that is his name. He was very controversial. He killed three people. We haven't done his episode yet. Are you thinking of the the Fox? 
No. Uh, hollow? No. No. You think of DuPont? No. That's what I was thinking. She was thinking of. That's no. it. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wouldn't know. listen. What was the thing? What was the What was the details? Right quick. I probably know. It's not important. It wasn't him. Go on. All right. So let's see who who did this. Let me talk about his background real quick, and you can quickly see that he has a lot of enemies. He was a scion of one of France's oldest banking families. In 1998, he actually not only being an elite member of a banking family, he was also married. He married one of the wealthiest families, married into one of the wealthiest families, the the uh, David Wheel families. I don't know. <laughs> Never heard of them. If you but... haven't heard of them, you're, you're just as broke as us. No one's heard of these guys. He married in 1998 this woman, Beatrice, the daughter of an investment banking chairman and who works at Sotheby's in Manhattan, has three children and everyone loved Beatrice's wife. Everyone loved her. Everyone loves Beatrice, not so her husband. On Wall Street, many considered him, there's no way to sugarcoat this, an arrogant prick. So he came from a very wealthy family. He was handed everything when he was born. And in 1976, he finished his business school and he joins a bank, Bank Stern, which his last name is Stern, right? So he joins this bank, which is named after him already. It was his father's bank. 1976. In 1977, he launches a coup and takes over his father's position, basically pushing his own father out of the bank that he started and owned. The, the bank that's been in the family forever, the Stern family. And within a year, so he starts in 1976 at the age of 22 after business school. And within a year, he stages a coup and basically pushes his father out of his chairman role of the bank, the family bank. I mean, like succession. (laughs) I mean, have you seen that show? I saw some episodes Uh. with you guys. So good. It's fucked up that he did that. And everyone, everyone thinks that. In 1984, he sells that bank that he put, the bank that's been in the family forever, that he pushes his father out. He takes control over it. And then within seven years, he sells it to a Lebanese investor. So not only has he... Holy shit. This guy has made some enemies, not only with everyone else, but with his family. That's where we're starting. Right? So, so, so he is at least like a hostile takeover, I would say. Yeah. It's like his bread and butter. Exactly. Now, that is just within his family. We're not going to get into like everything. But since 1998, since that happened, he started and since he got married to one of the wealthiest, yada, yada, he joins his father-in-law's banking firm, the Lazard firm, and the father-in-law hates him. So, so he kicks him out and basically gives him a $300 million severance package, which he uses that to start his own investment fund, which that's what he was doing right before he, he was murdered. All right. $300 million severance package. Yeah. He was renowned for shouting down at subordinates. His favorite thing to say to people who were talking to him was call them a quote fucking moron. Okay. I'm not feeling so. So bad about the manner in which he was maybe he has murdered. A, he has a lot of people that that hate him. And yeah. there was he was in litigation, a very brutal litigation at the time of his murder with a company called Rodia. Now, this is the this is the logo for Rodia right here. It's now called the Solvay Group. Now, this is a chemical company in France. So what he does is he invests, I think it was like 89 to 100 million dollars into this company and he loses loses it overnight. The investment went sour. This is this is right before his murder. The investment goes sour. He loses all that money. Now, Rodia, Rodia is actually like a subsidiary, subsidiary of the French government. They own the company that produces these chemicals. The French government does. Hmm. So he is he oh, is that's weird. He is basically suing the French government at this point. Okay. For a hundred million dollars right before he, he gets murdered. All right. So he's got enemies in very high places. Exactly. And friends in low places. Yeah. Not only that, he was also making some very shady deals in Russia, some shady investments that had went sour as well. And he was trying to take all these Russians to, to litigation. And oh, a lot of... Oh, boy. You do not want the oligarchs against you no, over there. No, like, other than China, who is a, an ally with Russia, right? Like, Well, so so I looked up some of the... Cuba? Co- Cuba? China. I yeah, she said China. aside from other China. Other than China. I mean, who else do you need? You got the, the biggest fucking... You got yeah. damn... No, I think the, I think um, North Korea would be North Korea friendly. Oh, also Syria, all those Syria, Iran, yeah, all those all those countries. Not only he, so he wasn't making, everybody that loves us. He, <laughs> all our friends, our yeah. friends 
deals with Russia. He wasn't making deals with the Russian government. He was making deals with the Russian mafia. So this guy, and this is basically a uh, not a stock image. I mean, he's a real mafia guy. <laughs> but I thought that was a pretty badass picture. <laughs> I think you need to get a shot like that. I think, uh, yeah. Just, like, can you imagine him just going like that with his ring against your face? Do you, do you want me to cover this guy? He's supposedly like... Nope, I actually don't want you to cover this guy. P- apparently, like, this is the most brutal Russian mafia guy ever or something. Let's not. Um, <laughs> I don't know. William Cohen, a Lazard firm banker and colleague, said, Look, a lot of people didn't like this guy. Some feel at a visceral level, you know. I'm not going to shed tears for this guy. But when you get past that, it's just pretty damn shocking. I mean, people just don't know what to think. Now, the the Swiss government actually allowed him to carry a gun, which I guess you you can't carry guns unless you you have like a real reason in in, uh, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So a judge, a judge actually issued him a permit to carry a permit while he was going through this litigation with the France's government, literally. Was he shot by his own gun? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was shot by his own gun. Good guess. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if it was so hard to get. Now, the person who ma- murdered him would have had to have known that he had oh, that weapon. He could have been braggy about it, knowing his personality. No, he was a very private person. Okay. So no one would know. So you're saying like the judge leaked it or something? Maybe. Um, Could have leaked it to like a, a government official of sorts, or it would have been somebody close personally. So if it's like the Russian mafia, would they use his gun? Um. So if so, I'm thinking certain people would would make it easy to bring a gun across the border or to like get that. But how would the Russian mafia know that he because if he was murdered with his own gun, how would they have known he had a gun? You know what I mean? I mean, I guess I don't Unless know. Unless somebody was like a Russian spy or something. I don't know. Jeffrey Keel, the president of of the former Republic New York Corporation said, Edward shared his fears with me and there was one particular matter that had him on the edge of his chair. I don't mean to be dramatic, but this was something that was costing people their lives. It's a matter where everyone that touches it has to be careful, even you. Mind you, Edward was not a guy who is easily frightened, but this, this is pretty sinister. He's a very private person, so he never admitted even to his chairman and to his secretary and, and everything else why he's carrying a gun at all. But people that he works with, they see that he's investing in these companies and stuff like that and going into litigation after litigation and, and you know, they just, they they know that he's scared. You know what I'm saying? But he never gets like a bodyguard or anything, which he should have. I would have if I'm yeah. that rich, you know. Shram's theory is the sushi guy got tired of making all those damn orders. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that's funny. Or Wolfie's guess. I'm sorry. Did I say Shram? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's funny. Um, bringing up the article, uh, the Vanity Fair article, they said that he ate, I think it was like, here, let me show you. This is crazy. This is what his co-partner Keel said, uh, quote, the single most distinctive and unusual characteristic of Edwards was how much sushi he ate. Quote, he could eat 50 or 70 pieces of sushi at once one sitting. I'm not kidding. We took turns paying the bill, usually 300 to $400. Damn. 70 pieces of sushi? Is that a lot? Yeah. So a sushi roll comes in like 12. I think eight. Eight. Damn, that is a lot. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Tram, that's a pretty good guess. <laughs> now, about the gun, Jeffrey Keel says, quote, Edward was carrying a concealed gun, a pistol, although I never saw it. The judge, the judge warned him that he was entering more dangerous territory then you know, end quote. <laughs> so Sounds the ju- like a threat. The judge, mm. well, well, the judge is the one that gave him the license. So he knew that he had the gun? Oh, yeah. Was the judge the killer? No, no, I'm saying no. I mean, maybe. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> You're telling us. That's the whole point of this whole thing that we're doing. I want to give you an eerie experience, Keel says, rising from his chair. He steps to a desk and lifts his cell phone from its cradle. He presses several buttons. I'm going to play you my last message from Edward. He hands me the phone and I hear Stern's voice speaking in smooth, unaccented English in a message he left for Keel on Sunday morning, the day before his death. Whose perspective is this coming from? Unaccented English. Like, does that mean? It's the Vanity Fair uh, writer of this case, the investigator from Vanity Fair. Okay, so in Vanity Fair is published in the United States or England? I guess the United States. I don't know. I, don't know. I just I just know when I'm reading Vanity Fair, I feel you know, it's like I'm reading you Forbes. Feel fancy? You know, oh, I made some money, you gotta give me a Forbes subscription and maybe Wall Street Journal. <laughs> 
and just pretend. I don't know. I'm broke. Or like Vanity <laughs> Unfair, Shram but, says. Rodia, the company that he was in litigations for almost $100 million that had disappeared, Rodia had misrepresented their company's finances. But one oh, of... Oh, it's like a Theranos type thing. <laughs> Theranos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that girl in jail? Yeah, I think she's about to be. Oh, in jail. they should put her in jail with Sam Bankman Fried, the uh, freaking yeah, crypto. Yeah, they guy. seem like a match made in heaven. <laughs> they should date. The Theranos, isn't that the blood? Thing? Yeah, the blood. Elizabeth, yes. Elizabeth Short yes. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, you I mean, saw Mrs. That. Steve Jobs, that's what her name is. <laughs> Uh, All right. Anyway, the litigation with the Rodia is really important. One of the executives involved. Now, this company misrepresented their own holdings. So that is worth fraud. being sued. Yeah, exactly. So they could be sued for fraud. Oh, yeah. However, one of the executives who was being sued had just been named France's Minister of Finance. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I was right. All right. So what do you guys think before I uh, completely turn this thing uh, over? I don't know what to think anymore. Well, to, now it, to me, it does feel like a, a cover up of sorts, like government, you know, involvement. The judge could have very easily leaked, you know, or someone handling the paperwork for that. Yeah. All right. Going back to the apartment, the body found, which obviously there's no photos. I mean, the 38th richest person like, dude, there's not going to be fucking photos. And this case was very hush hush. So there was a lot of speculations. This is where the Russian mafia comes in and all this stuff. But the people who can really solve this case is the people that work with Edward Stern, because he is a very private person. From everything I've seen, he is a complete dick, asshole, everything else, just complete... Like, thinks he's better than everyone. He has a lot of enemies. But for someone to shoot him execution style four times, twice in the head, that is someone that wants to stomach, make sure he's dead. chest, twice in the head. I wonder if he did the stomach, they did the stomach first so that he would be in a lot of pain. Ooh, that's a good thought. Good before point. finishing him off. The apartment building, the penthouse that he lived in was was locked. Sandy Kaufman, which is his uh, one of his secretaries, initially thought the death was accidental during rough sex. Quote, rope, ropes drew draped on a bedroom chair and she thought he fell and hit his head only to realize later that he was shot. She was the one to be questioned thoroughly for I think it was like six hours. They were interrogating her because she was not only closest to him and managed more than just finances, managed a lot of his personal life as well. But eventually when they asked her, OK, what do you remember the Sunday night before or Saturday or a couple of days before she had seen someone with Edward and she's the only person that would you know she the secretary was they were really close they she's been working there for 15 years she sees a person who Edward she doesn't know her name but the the person is only known to her as quote latex this woman the the secretary that worked with Edward did more than keep his finances in check she kept his personal life in check as well especially when it comes to the mistresses and keeping said information away from from his wife, right? He's got a freaking wife, Beatrice, and two kids. Let me show you Beatrice. Was the voicemail important, by the way? The the, the guy was the Vanity Fair person heard? What do you mean? Well, you, I read that piece, but I don't know what the message said. Oh, we'll never know what it said. Oh. <laughs> this is Beatrice right here, the wife. Now, they had been separate. I want to mention they had been separated for a year, but no one knew about it. It was that that private. However, for years, Edward had been had been doing what a lot of, a lot of wealth the financiers and bankers do. They've been renting prostitutes, right? They've been renting mistresses. His secretary, Sandy Kaufman, said she seen this girl and he had mentioned that she was coming into town and her name was Latex. So they're like, all right, let's look at latex. They go back and they look into the apartment and they realize that he has CCTV. And then the only person they see coming into the apartment around that time was latex. This woman named latex. That's all they knew. Right. I think you were probably right with the first image then that you pulled up of the latex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Suit. Now, he has a lot of mistresses, a lot. However, Latex, the mistress, she is a, well, I'm going to tell you who she is in a second, but she's more than just someone that he hires to, uh, you know, for sexual services. This is her right here. This is her and Edward in Africa, big game hunting. Um, sh- I mean, she's probably in her 30s, she, maybe. Let me just, I don't know. Let me I just say, say this. 40s, but she's had some work done. Maybe that's why they call her Latex. Mm. Let me tell you this. Is she not plain looking? I She's not wearing makeup. Yeah, I wasn't. It's not what I was expecting. I was expecting like a exactly. dominatrix type of a look. But she's got very light brown or blonde hair. And she wasn't wearing makeup in that photo. She has a very big mouth. If you go back, like very that. like big yeah. smile. Yes. Big smile. I That's stand by that. Mind. I mean, this is a model photo. It looks like normal, natural. Yeah. Would, normal. Wouldn't expect uh, anything from her. Yeah. Yeah. Now, keep in mind when they they met and with a lot of the mistresses he's met, he had a wife who loved him and it would come out that she she knows about this. I mean, he's always traveling. He's traveling to all these different countries. He's gotten mistresses for days and the the wife, which I feel like may be a real thing, probably I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. But if you're really wealthy and you travel like that, you have a wife and kids like he did. I feel like the secretary kind of covers all this up for you, you know, and tells the wife one thing, but I also feel like the wife knows, but she doesn't want to admit it type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, isn't that what happened with Jeff Bezos? Didn't he have like a girlfriend on the side or some shit? And Bill Gates? Mm -hmm. Didn't they both go through I know Bill Gates. I don't know about Jeff Bezos. I don't really know much about him. Yeah. You know who doesn't cheat? Mark Zuckerberg. He's a good guy. He's still married, right? (laughs) I don't know. You're just saying that because you don't want him, his reptilian self to get you. All so right. that it does, like when he's in the, the meta metaverse, metaverse, nothing comes to attack him. Cecil Broussard was her name, 36 years old. However, her dom name oh. as a professional dominatrix as the one they know as Latex. You wouldn't think she's a professional dominatrix. Nope. They call her dom name was Alice. She met Stern in 2001. So that was four years before. It had come out some of the letters he's been sending to her and some others. We're going to go into it. But you understand she's the one that did it. And we, we got. Uh, yes. Okay, good. Did anyone ever answer our question last week? Is there another term for dominatrix for males or is it a gender neutral term? I don't know. I don't think so. Can anyone else anyone know on the chat that's here today? Because I remember we talked talked about that last week. I also I feel like it's important for me to disclose my my genital status, which I do have a penis. Good for you. I'm I ha- feel like that should be on uh, the I'm, uh, employment checkbox. That is what I was, <laughs> you know, expecting well, as your spouse. The VA asked me the other day what my sexual preference is. I'm like, hmm. what the fuck? That's why, why do they need to know? I'm like, literally, I'm, I'm like playing footsie with you, man. Like, I mean, obviously I'm into you, you know? Well, I was like, why do they need to know that I shit? Know. It's crazy. I don't know. Anyway. Um, from Vanity Fair, her name is Cecil Brossard. She's 36. She's some kind of an artist, all, all right. In addition to sculptures, she creates in her spare time. Her principal employment appears to be as a very expensive call girl specializing in sadomasochistic sex. She is the troubled daughter of a French advertising executive. So what you read from the Vanity Fair, the tone of it's like her name is her name is Cecil. She's 36 and she's some kind of artist or something, you know, like it's very cliche. OK, you're this rich guy. You see it in the movies like this guy's worth a billion dollars. And the the woman that he's cheating on his wife with is some kind of artist. She does sculptures or paintings like her dream is what to own her own studio. She never graduated high school. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very cliche who she is, right? She's a troubled daughter of a French advertising executive. Her parents divorced at three. She saw firsthand her mother attempt suicide. The mother also tried to kill her and her sister as well. That's a lot of trauma. Yeah. Can you read from the Daily Beast? Brossard's father was the sort of man who left nudie magazines around the house, had sex in front of his children, and molested Brossard. An uncle also raped Brossard when she was a teenager and was never held responsible. Jesus. Okay, so we know that she did this. She shot him four times. They were in love. Can you kind of take a guess why she did this? They knew each other for four years. He's been paying her for sex. Mm, Was she upset that it was never going to be anything more? Like, that she was never going to not be a miss, just a mistress. 
Or maybe he assaulted her. Is there something that a guy in his position, being a total dick, would say to really upset someone? You're just a whore. All right. At 17 years old, she was in and out of psych hospitals. She never graduated high school, low-level jobs, waitresses, clerks, few modeling gigs. According to her father, she has been 10 years a prostitute and a, do- a professional dominatrix by the time she she met Edward. Her hobbies included sculpting odd and erotic nudes and and she dreamed of owning her own studio, which by that I put cliche because that's what you see in all the movies, right? You know, the anyway. Wolfie has a good guess, I think. Did he? Oh, I was thinking, did he try to leave or did she try to leave him? Like one of them would let the other. Yeah, maybe. He had hired her. And this is also cliche. He had hired her to, quote, decorate his apartment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, the time he's got a wife during all of this stuff. Right. So she is in and out, in and out. She actually doesn't even live there. She lives in France. So she comes back to Switzerland. She flies in and flies out type of thing, you know, and he's obviously paying for it. Yep. Her, she went by Alice as a leather dominate, dominatrix. Her secretary, the one that knew her by the name Latex, said the following, quote, she was a lovely woman, pleasant, not beautiful, very plain looking, I thought, just a run of the mill basic woman. And that's kind of a burn right there. Stern being a the asshole that everyone knows he is would humiliate her in front of his his friends, his executive friends, all of his entourage. At least one time I saw that he forced her to have sex with another man in front of everyone in the room while she wept. That's what the paper said. She wept while she was forced oh. to have sex. In a letter, this is what a letter that Stern wrote her in 2004. It is mad how much you love me, Stern wrote in a 2004 letter. I love you hopelessly. Or maybe it is the other way around. We are so good together. I didn't like your suggestion about having your independence, but it is indispensable. I want to be with you. I want to marry you. The whole time he is trying to get her to marry him. Hmm. So why would she, like, why wouldn't she? You know what I'm saying? Because he's fucked up and an asshole. She got the letter E tattooed on her wrist. She really did love Edward. And however, she was married at the time. She was married to this New York guy. He was, uh, she was married. Yeah, she was married. They're both married. Oh, I missed that. I only thought he was married. No, she was also married and Stern was trying to get her to leave her husband, which was some kind of like New York paper magnate, like Dunder Mifflin type of thing. And so <laughs> magnate isn't what comes to mind with Thunder Mifflin, but that's okay. <laughs> More like W.B. Mason, but okay. Yeah. Okay. So this comes out after the murder. Stern had opened a bank account for her and placed $1 million, $1 million for the sole purpose of leaving her husband and start and starting over with him. He's worth 600 million. I know, but she, all right, this is the reason she didn't want to come with him. Okay. You've been proposing to me for years, but how do I know that I, I'm going to leave my husband, come live with you, and then you're going to get tired of me and just kick me out. I mean, you treat me like shit. You you rape me. You let other men rape me in front. You know what I'm saying? What happens if I leave my husband, who I have security with, to come live with you, and then you get tired of me? So yeah. he's like, okay, I, I get that. I'll open you a bank account and put $1 million in it. That's financial security, so you don't have to worry about it. If I do that, you still got the million-dollar bank account, mm. right? When Stern expressed fears that their whole four-year relationship was a plot to wean a million bucks out of him, Brassard comforted him. I will do the only thing that I can show you the extent of my love. In this, it is the meaning of your gesture that has an immense value, she wrote back. You will get your million back. This sign that you are loved for who you are and only for who you are. Here's what happens. She agrees. She's like, I'm going to do it. Go ahead and open the bank account. He does. Now he does this on January 12th. So right, literally one month before his murder, he opens this account, puts $1 million in it. And then she says, okay. But then she just vanishes. She's got this account, $1 million. She doesn't answer the phone. She doesn't respond. Now the, the, the secretary, the secretary is trying to get a hold because I guess that's what secretaries of rich billionaires do. They, they're they trying to get a hold of the, this mistress through any way possible. And she can't. So what do they do? Because, hey, you know, I said you come live with me and with the million dollars. So they freeze the account. Right. Which, you know, it's kind of fucked. I mean, I think. I, I mean, I, don't I know. mean, I, I can understand taking that step. Yeah. She yeah. vanished. Bye. <laughs> so. Hey, thanks. Bye. <laughs> 
Stern was morose. I'm never going to see her again, he said. Van Reel wasn't so sure. Now that her account was frozen, he predicted, she'll call tomorrow. And surprise, surprise, she did, said the family advisor. She called Edward on Friday. There you go. She called on Friday. Can we work this out? Why'd you freeze the account? You know, I was just not answering the phone. My phone died. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Only two people know what happened in that bedroom, his sec- Kaufman says, and one is dead. Given his attire, Stern was apparently expecting a sexual rendezvous. Rendezvous. I don't think you negotiate financial transactions wearing a latex suit, she says. I wouldn't. She actually is the one that killed him. I know I sent you guys down a little rabbit hole, but that rabbit hole was what everyone else was going down to. Everyone else was a speculating. Lot, he had a lot of enemies. Yeah, yeah a lot of enemies. So she says that the reason she did it was she was over there that weekend and they were discussing the financial, the the account being frozen. How do I get this unfrozen? And then he dresses up in the latex. She puts on her black dominatrix suit, gets her whip and everything else. And then she says that he had told her the following thing. He presses a button concealed in the living room furniture and two hidden drawers slide open. One contains sex toys for lovemaking sessions. The other holds four four loaded firearms. Cecile Broussard continues to ask questions, but Stern doesn't answer her. He is elsewhere. He slips into the latex suit that she gave him and begins to lead her on. She plays along. His hands are bound and he's sitting on a pleasure accessory. At this point, she reportedly heard him tell her a million dollars is expensive for a whore. At this, she grabs a gun and shoots four bullets in a row, two in the head, one in the chest and one in the stomach. Stern falls to the ground. He is actually sitting like on a, I think it's a dildo, right? On some sort of flesh or something. That's a dildo. I mean, it could be something. Anal beads. Yeah. A butt plug. Quote, a million (laughs) dollars. What? Don't know. (laughs) I I mean, I don't know either. I'm just, these are things that I think those are supposed uh, Sydney agrees, butt plug. <laughs> Does anybody want to want me to cover the, the case of the butt plug bandits? I was going to pair that with today's case, but I didn't. <laughs> how, how have you not covered a case that has that in the title yet? I'm just... I'm flabbergasted. All right. So this is what she says. She she puts on this thing. And she's Edward's not responding to the reason why he froze the accounts. And she is getting really upset. And then all of a sudden he says the following quote, a million dollars is a lot of money to pay for a whore. And she picks up the gun, which is located right next to the dildos. And she shoots him right in the head, right in the eyeball. First shot hits his head. And then she shoots him three more times. The reason she does that is, and let me show you this picture one more time because this will really get you to understand. So this is them in Africa. And the reason they were in Africa is because they were big game hunting. Oh, God. <laughs> what? Oh, that makes me mad. It does make me mad. Another reason why I fucking hate this guy. I'm going to be honest. Um, So they were big game hunting. And she says the following. From the Daily Beast, her prince taught her unimaginable things. On an African safari, he showed her that when you hunt down wounded prey, you often need to fire again at point blank range to put an animal out of his misery. So the misery you put it in. Yeah. She would say the following to the National Post, quote, I had the impression that I was shooting a plastic doll, not a person. I shot again because I was afraid that he was suffering. Honestly, she could have got away on that defense. I thought I was shooting a plastic doll. You know, I mean, he looked like a fucking (laughs) head to toe in a latex suit. Yeah, I I, I feel your first image search was accurate. Yeah, right. So she she did actually confess to everything. She felt guilty. She obviously loved the man, but the man didn't love her. And in a report to the court, the case psychiatrist explained that Broussard perceived the murder as her victory over Stern, a woman traumatized during her childhood and then again as an adult by a man who manipulated her on the most sensitive of issues, believed she was reclaiming her power. Just as disturbing by killing him, she made sure that he wouldn't leave her as his final words suggested suggested that he would do. She was sacrificing him to keep him forever. She sent the the dildo, apparently that was in his butt that he was using on himself. He sent that because it was evidence. She mails it in a package to her aunt and uncle who live in Nancy, France, because she wanted a souvenir of it, of him. And the uh, the paper says, quote, only one can only imagine what her aunt and uncle thought <laughs> when they opened up the dildo. <laughs> 
Yeah, that is not something I would ever wish a family member would ever send to another family hey, member. Look what we got from Cecile. Sacre bleu. I'm going to be fucking honest, man. Dude, I don't. I don't. No, it's a baguette. I probably shouldn't say this, man, but dude, this guy deserved it, dude. I'm just saying. I mean, he fucked a lot of people over and then a million dollars is a lot of money to pay for a whore. I mean, the gun's right there. You know, fuck you, motherfucker. I- <laughs> You know, there there are times where I'm not very sympathetic. This is one of those times. I mean, what a dickhead. So. Holy shit. Now, what was her sentence? So she actually had a really good um, defense. She said she, she wanted to ask for forgiveness. And her defense team argued that Stern was an unscrupulous manipulator and sexual predator who pushed her into committing a crime of passion mm. that should warrant a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. So she she's not in prison forever. I think she's she is out, honestly. She I should couldn't be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But she did she did go to prison for a while. Wow. You know, but that's the story. Well, I think that was probably the I think that was like an appropriate time served. I mean, All I don't right. want to say it dude but this i mean someone still got murdered he was raping her and and yeah, le- okay. letting his friends rape her like i mean i mean on, if man. if she had done something in that instance it would have been self-defense yeah. right you know what i mean so it's almost like um too little, too late. actually i i feel like her defense could have been better because they for the things that he did to her granted a lot of it may have been consensual but certainly not all of it was especially as a a, a prior victim of assault mm-hmm. from her father and her uncle. Like, isn't that a, um, it is a defense. I think you, you mentioned it, um, once in one of your ar- articles, I know mm-hmm. you mentioned it. Um, it's like, a. it's not like an instant, um, it's not like self-defense, but it's crime of passion. No, no. Like it's like woman. batter, like when, battered, oh, woman's battered, battered woman's woman's syndrome. woman syndrome. And like, if it happens multiple times, multiple times, it, that can be an appropriate defense. Even if it like something didn't happen in the moment. If you're ever in that situation, I you know what I would have said if I was her, I'd been I would have said that he was sitting there and that he tried to get up and he said he was gonna kill me. So I self defense. Boom. There you go. You know? Isn't it crazy though? I mean, this is like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't treat people like shit. No. A million dollars is a lot to pay for a whore. That's pretty Jesus. terrible. That is fucking terrible. He was an asshole. She's sitting right by four loaded guns. You know who it reminds me a lot of? Who? Shayna Hubers. You remember she killed her boyfriend? Yes. Because he said something dumb or, or whatever it was. I can't remember what it was, but he said something or, or whatever. Was he cheating on her, maybe? Yeah, something like that. So she picked up a gun and Hell shot Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. You know what it reminds one? me of? The last uh, one of the scenes in Moulin Rouge where Christian throws the money at Satine mm. and it's like, here you go, I've paid my whore. But really, in reality, she was trying to like help him out. Yes, yes. We're getting a lot of Chicago references in this yes. live chat today. Yes. He had it coming. There you go. They were hoping. You yeah. Could Did they? I mean, Sydney had it. Uh, read it there. You? I don't feel too bad for him. No. I mean, he 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 fired his father <laughs> from his own bank. Yeah. <laughs> You know, also who this story reminds me a lot of is those Canadian billionaires that we covered. Remember? Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't remember their name. Um, the one that you, that uh, yeah, you were interviewed about. Uh, I can't recently. remember the name, but that guy was in a lot of litigations. He was yeah. actually named the most litigated person in the world. Oh yeah. Damn. I mean, that is not a good title to no. fucking have. <laughs> No, it is not. No. no, it is not. I mean, I was like doing more research on that. He had everybody. No, so there was this cu- billionaire couple. I can't remember their names. But anyway, this guy had so many en- enemies, including the Hells Angels, <laughs> because he was doing uh, pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. And he was actually breaking into the fentanyl market, which the Hells Angels control, I guess. <laughs> Jesus. It's like, holy what? shit. And that one wasn't that's still unsolved. Yeah, yeah, that one's still unsolved. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, that's that's the one term. The couple found hanged. Yeah. I can't remember which one. Yeah. And they were hanged to to make it look like a suicide. Yeah, yeah. the one at their house with the pool. Yes. I know, yes, but if yes, you yes. go if you go if you dive deeper into it, it was it was also Was it? No. There was a statue of him like sitting a certain way, like a statue of him sitting a certain way. I and, wish like and he someone was would make positioned. A statue of me. He was positioned in that same way that's after death. It, yeah, so it kind of crazy. Anyway, Anyway, I hope you guys like that. Uh, All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.